bioinformatician at the University of Colorado Denver. Uh, I got my PhD in genetics. Um, let's see, get this right here. There we go. And I'll be recording this lecture too. So hopefully, I, I will. I will give you some links to some of my sites on the web that you can check out. So I have lots of lectures and everything. Um, about four years ago, um, I was at the university. So I, I do bioinformatics, and this is basically analyzing DNA. That each one of us has six billion nucleotides, or letters, different letters. Basically, it's my job to make sense of that. And at some point, we're all going to have our DNA sequence. It's the costs are going so low, you know, but the problem is, is there's only probably 0.00001% of us that actually know what the hell that even means, right? So I wanted to go out and just kind of, you know, introduce this concept to, to high school kids because I think they should know. Um, I gave a few talks. I met somebody at my gym that uh, his wife was a teacher and she wanted to know if I would uh, give a lecture for their school. And so I did that. I really enjoyed it. I got incredible feedback from the kids. So I kept giving talks to different high schools and I gave a talk to Green Valley Ranch, uh, DSST. Um, the talk went so well, the, uh, the principal uh, asked me to, if I'd be interested in giving a intro level course on big data. So I spent two weeks uh, in the summer and basically gave a introductory course to all the juniors in that high school. That went really well, and so she asked me if I would be interested in maybe teaching a senior level class. Um, I did <laughs> for two years. So what I'm going to do is tell you about my experience, uh, me teaching this uh, big data class to high school kids for the last two years. Now, why is this important? Why would I even want to teach <laughs> big data to, to kids? Because there's lots of ways to use the information. That, any social media, any, anything you use on social media, you know, this goes for, what are some of the other ones? There's Facebook, there's Instagram, all of these. Anytime they ask you a question of, you know, you see a survey that says, what Game of Thrones character are you most like? <laughs> you know, they're mining that information because people are answering that. You know, they're using this information to sell you things. You know, obviously everybody's heard of Edward Sto Snowden. Familiar with that? Yep. Totally. <laughs> the government is mining you. Everybody is mining you. Not only is it the National Security Agency, but now police departments are actually doing this as well. That with all this information out there, we can use that to basically predict the future. And that's kind of what I wanted to show them. Anybody here heard of Nate Silver? Yep. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, I follow him. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, 536 is his website. It's an amazing website. Please do you know, check it out. But he basically figured out the 2012 election based yep. on data. And he didn't do any polls himself. He just took the average of all the polls that were out there. Some were left, some were right. So you can use this to actually predict major events. And the CIA is actually using data analysis just for this. They're using normal people to figure out what, say, Russia is going to do. And it's working. <laughs> That's the scary part. Uh, and obviously, you can make a lot of money with this. That you know, as far as stock prices go, the stock market, you know, a lot of this is just collecting data, trying to figure out if a stock price is going to go up or down. And my uncle is a farmer, a wheat farmer in Nebraska, and his computer setup is more intensive than mine. That with climate change, things have changed. And that right now on these farms are so dialed in, they have GPS, you could basically get off the tractor and let the thing, you know, basically combine your entire field. So there's lots of ways we can use information. This is an incredible skill that we can use in many different ways. Not only that, and obviously if we can use it in a lot of ways, there's a huge job market for it, right? Um, data analysis is predicted to be one of the, they, they always say this, the sexiest job of the 21st century. <laughs> Staring at a computer is going to be the sexiest job, I'm telling you. <laughs> not a, not a you know, uh, spy or anything like that. It is in, my field is in huge demand that I'm actually leaving the university to pursue my own consulting firm. That for me, it's just everybody needs, everybody has lots and lots of data, especially given the fact that we have computers now. So we just generate it like crazy. 
And I also mentioned to him, does anybody know, uh, does anybody recognize this picture? Yep. What movie? Yep. Yeah, Moneyball, mm -hmm. right? We, we actually watched this movie uh, kind of at the beginning of the, uh, of the course. You know, sports, you cannot have a professional sports team without a sports analyst on it anymore. And we actually, I brought in uh, uh, what, Trevor, Trevor pa Patch is the sports analyst for the Rockies. And he actually came in and gave, gave a talk, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, the stuff they're doing with data is amazing. So this is my class from last year. <laughs> it was seven students. It was a pretty small one. Um, and these weren't AP kids. You know, one of these kids was a genius. Three of them actually didn't get to walk to graduation because <laughs> their gr grades were so bad. Not from my class, by the way. But it was a very diverse kind of group to, to teach these big concepts to. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm tell you about, you know, what I did for this class. So we started out with the big data. This, this course went from November to about May 2nd. And to get them interested in, in data analysis, we actually did sports. And November was great because there was a lot, a lot of NFL data available. <laughs> so I could, I could collect that and mine that. And we could actually use that to try to predict winners for the next week's game. Right? And thank gosh the, uh, the Broncos did well this year because everybody was all excited about that. You know, and basically it gives us a chance. And I'm going to tell you this is that most high school kids have never used Excel, which is crazy. Excel is on every computer. It's your bread and butter of data analysis and not very many of these kids are coming out uh, learning how to use it. No, I mean, that's, that shouldn't be happening. Okay. <laughs> I'm not wrong, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> it is. It is terrible. Um, you know, and again, taking a bunch of data and graphing it, you can see so much stuff. So basically, that's how I got him into it, and we would get a, a bunch of uh, uh, experience using Excel, uh, lots of experience. Uh, they would make their own databases and, and modulate it every week because obviously the, the, the uh, stats would change every week. Uh, then what I wanted to do, I picked a project to, kind of based on their environments, things in their environment that might affect them. Can we analyze this data? And so for that, I did climate change. Obviously, <laughs> climate change affects us all. And so we actually analyzed, instead of me telling them what climate change is, we actually went in and downloaded historical climate data and analyzed it. And they saw it themselves. Uh, this year, we did crime in, in their community. Most of my kids were from Montbello. So there is a data site where you can actually download all the police reports for Denver. It's amazing <laughs> how much data is out there. And I, we actually downloaded Montbello, and we actually made some predictions. Did you do any mapping with the data? Oh, yeah. What totally. What did you use to do the map? Did you use? Well, we actually used their website. There's an excellent mapping program on there, and I'm going to show you that. Uh, and then um, the, the third part. So, so this is basically get them involved, get them Excel experience, show them that data analysis can be used in their environment, and then I wanted them to do their own study. Anybody heard of wisdom of crowds? Sort of. Okay, I'm going to go into that concept. But basically what I wanted to do was, was basically survey, kind of like what Nate Silver did. You know, ask somebody, ask lots of people a different question, or the same question, and then kind of take the average to kind of figure out what's going on. And then at the last, and I, I'm not going to have time to talk about this, but we did bioinformatics, actually. And we analyzed real data sets. So the first year we did lung cancer because I was working on it. And <laughs> it was an easy way to, for me to get them to do my work. <laughs> but this year, I actually, you know, there's so much data in the public sphere. I asked him, you know, what do you guys want to do? And one of the students, his aunt died of breast cancer about two weeks before that. So I go, let's just analyze breast cancer. So that's exactly what we did. Again, all it takes is a computer and an internet access, and you can do any of this stuff. Um, also, I'm going to kind of breeze through this. At the very end, I will give you a link, and I can send this to, to Meg to basically, you know, I basically put together a, a Google Plus page for this class. And it's kind of like Facebook. And so what I would do is, like I am now, I would record my lectures, post them to my YouTube channel, and then I would basically put them in chronicle order 
on this this page and so you could basically scroll through the entire page and get an idea you could basically follow my class from the beginning to the end so that's why I'm not going to give you a whole lot of like describing exactly what I do you can actually see what I did also this allows me to put anything that I want on here like articles that are related to what they're studying so here you can kind of see is this showing up you can see here that there was this high school team that never punts because statistically it doesn't make sense. And they, they win the state championships. But I, I wanted to show them, it's like, yes, you can use analytics to basically, you know, for, for any of this stuff. Also, the grading was a community grade. I kind of went all into uh, um, wisdom of crowds. So basically what we did was we would, we would rate everybody in the class. Uh, periodically and this was based on presentations abstracts stuff like that and just you know whether they contributed and it worked out really well you would think that the kids would go okay I'm just gonna we're just gonna all give each other A's and that'll be it and they did it and they, they and it was very representative of the kind of effort that I got in class it was it worked really well and I didn't have kids you know trying to you know kiss my butt <laughs> to, to get a good grade that what I wanted them to show is that it's how you relate to a group of people don't do this stuff for the grade so this was a level of Microsoft Excel experience two of my students had never ever used Microsoft Excel and they weren't here when I, I gave the intro class these four individuals had some experience and it was just because of they took my intro class. And then one was kind of a, a heavy math kid. He, he had some pretty average experience. But again, you can see Excel is the bread and butter of data analysis. It was my job. What I wanted to do was get him really familiar with, with Excel. So we did sports analytics. 